Cool beans. Money, your mic's muted. I'm sorry, what was the question? So we about to go, you can go ahead and get started. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, is everybody ready? All right, I would like to thank everyone for being present for the book release of 1975. Tonight is going to be a really good, interesting night. We got some great content going on. We are going to start off with a spoken word by Diamond Jones. Hello everyone, I'm Diamond Jones and I'll be reading a selection written by my grandmother, Darrell Slade. It's located on page 78 of 1975. Darrell's on a rainy day, relax. No perms keep it natural. The power of the black woman, we call it phenomenal. Like it's unusual for a woman like Dee Jones to rule, silly fool. I've sat with Michelle and Oprah, but no chair was like Darrell's chair. African goddess who did my hair like I do poems. No chair was like Dee Jones. Her salon had the energy of Maya Angelou's poems. Rainy days, I must say, is when I write the most. So today I wrote live from Darrell's chair. And now I'd like to ask for a moment of silence in honor of my grandmother, Darrell Jones. All right, hi everybody. I wanna thank you all again for coming to this meeting today. I'm Harmony Jones. I'm gonna be reading the introduction for my dad's book, 1975. Carlos A. Jones, a native born of Louisville, North Carolina on March 12, 1975 to Winnie Ballard and Darrell Louise Jones. Growing up, Carlos struggled with having seizures, yet with the help of his family, he was able to overcome that at a very young age. In 1982, Carlos and his mother relocated to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Winston became a second home to Carlos and he began to adapt to the community well. At 13, Carlos lost his father, which is tough for any child to have to experience. Carlos's mother was his backbone and was there to support him through his tribulations. As time passed, Carlos met and then married his high school sweetheart and together they started a family. They had five lovely kids together, but the youngest was lost in stillbirth. After all that Carlos went through, he had the courage to share his story with you in his book that is set to release in a few minutes, 1975. His inspiration for the book was to tell the untold stories of both of the cities that made him the man that he is today. Thank you all again. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to our journalist for No More Suits, who will be interviewing Carlos Jones tonight, India Jones. Thank you, Harmony, for the introduction. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us live for our release of the 1975 novel. I'm India Jones, your executive chief journalist for No More Suits. Why? Um, I'm going to um, our author, Carlos Jones, a series of brief questions for an exclusive live interview with us. You've seen it here first. Um, so I would ask that everyone mute their mics so um, this interview can be recorded so I can go back and look over everything. Once again, thank you all for being here tonight. And hello, Mr. Jones. Are you ready for your interview? Yes, Ms. Jones, I am. All right, how are you tonight? I'm doing all right, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. So firstly, I'm gonna ask you, what inspired you to become an author? I don't, I don't know, you know, I'm just, 
I guess it was just in it was just in me to be to become an author. My uh, my little brother, which is uh, Daryl Q. Slade, he asked me, "Have I ever thought about writing a book?" And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, we can do this." Okay, that's an excellent answer. And you will hear brief moments of silence as I'm writing down some of the quotes and you know some of your statements. So my second question for you is going to be, how did you decide what to write about? I just, it was a no brainer, you know, I just thought about the, the things that I went through as a kid, you know, uh, I just went from there. It was just scratch, you know, <laughs> it, was from scratch. it was from scratch memories. All right. I, you, I'm sorry. All right. My third question for you is, when did you begin writing 1975? Uh, the end of 2018. Was that for a specific reason or is that just when it came to your head, you, you put your pencil to the paper? Well, actually me, uh, me and my, my little brother, Quentin Slade, we, uh, he, we talked on the phone and he was writing as I was talking. That's how the book came about. Okay. All right. And then my fourth question for you is, did you face any challenges or adversities while writing 1975? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, I have not have I haven't had any adversities while doing 1975. Um, it's just, I guess, it's just a dream come true. It's like uh, a little boy. Well, in in y'all's in y'all's version is a a. a uh, glass slipper but uh it's just what i live live through i guess <laughs> that makes a lot of sense is it's like a, a autobiography all right and then so we know that you weren't originally an author this is your your first book your first novel so how did the journey to become an author make you feel? And now that you have published your first book, how, how, what is your current feeling? How do you feel currently? I feel ecstatic. Uh, I just feel, uh, just, I feel good about it. You know, uh, I never knew that I had it in me. But since I do, I might as well put it on paper, black and white. And lastly, I just want to ask you, what advice would you give to any aspiring authors, you know, to the people out there who are probably thinking about, you know, starting a novel of their own? What would you, what would you say to them? What advice would you give to them? I would give my advice to them is to be uh, I mean I don't know. what what can I say? It's it's uh it's challenging at, at times, you know what I mean, but you have to stick to your guns. If you say that you want to do something, go ahead and do it. Don't don't uh Put in, don't uh, stop putting it off, procrastinating. You know, uh, just have the strength to do it, because you can always do it. Uh, that, that, I think that's that's about that's about it. You know.
All right. Well, thank you for your time. And thank you once again, everybody, for being at our 1975 book release. We really appreciate everyone coming out at this late hour. And um, I'm going to pass the floor. All right. So we, we can open up the floor like to open discussion. Like, Carlos, how you feeling? Like, uh, what's what's going through your mind? And if anybody in the audience, um, any of his daughters, if y'all want to ask questions um, or make any comments, now is the time to do that. So I have a question. What would you say was your favorite part about the writing process or the publishing process? The favorite part is just my the whole my my favorite part of the process is just you know the history of our family, you know where we come from, and where we're going. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a lot of stuff in the book that I've learned as a grown you know older older person. Um, and I was just, I'm just happy to, to put it, everybody that's in the book that's not here today, they, you know, uh, come back to life in the book by words. All right. And we have a, a question in the chat from Jazz. And she asks, what part of the book was the hardest to write? The beginning, the middle, or the end? Uh, the middle. Because I think the middle is talking about my mother. Uh, the middle is talking about my father. Uh, as a grown man, <laughs> they said never, never I, I was always taught, you know, never, never let nobody see you cry. But Winnie Ballard, Darrell Jones, they my heart, my girls, my brother, <clears throat> all over my heart. Uh, but I'm I'm glad to have that that uh, <clears throat> that opportunity to share with them, you know. But it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. But uh, yeah, the, the the hardest part was the middle part, you know. I I guess uh, the whole thing is was the hardest part, but sometimes you have to uh, learn how to overcome your obstacles. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be this or that, tit for tat, you know? But uh, yeah, uh, from front to back is none but memories. <clears throat> none but memories. Good memories, but memories. Um, I like to say like, just as your daughter, like growing up and you always having like history to talk about and knowing how much you love history, how that was like your favorite subject in school. It was really great to see you like being able to write that down and make it something your own for like a whole bunch of other people to see and not just like talking people you know but like everybody out there so i'm really proud that you were able to do this and turn it into something really great thank you daddy baby <laughs> that's daddy baby y'all uh, you know what's my name daddy baby <laughs> What's my name, Daddy Baby? Daddy. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that was that was uncalled for. That's hey, that's no joke. But uh, yeah. I would like to come on and say that all of us together have worked as a team to edit this book, um, to reread it, to make sure everything was put in the, the proper order. You know, I think it was a great experience because originally I would probably never see myself edit book but being that this opportunity came about and it was with family and um we're able to you were able to get your um your story out and share a little bit of the history with Winston-Salem and Kentucky I think it's just been an amazing you know experience and I'm glad that I got to participate and you know be a part of this project everybody oh yeah we also my have history, my history is your history also. Right. We have a question in the chat from Jalen Weathers. It says, what's your future plan for 1975 going into the future? I don't, you know what, nephew, I don't know, man. I don't know. It could it could be a volume two. You know, I I I'm a visionary, so. I can see I can see a volume two. Maybe it's gonna be about the ballots. <laughs> you never know. You never know. I I would like to say something. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I would like to just say that uh, I'm proud of you uh, for you know writing this book, you and Quentin. Uh, I put in a lot of time and a lot of work, even the girls. Um, I would meet up on Sundays and work on a book. So all I have to say, I'm very proud of you. Also, uh, I'm buy a book today, you know, just to support you. And, you know, uh, I know it's great things coming for everybody on this call. I love y'all. I love y'all. Love you too, nephew. I guess I got to speak, uh, you know, it's from your brother. Um, you know, what what this did was bigger than a book, you know. It's like uh we brought old memories back to life, you know, in so many different ways. And for all your girls, all four of them, you know, to be committed to you as their father and to have witnessed that was really beautiful, um, you know, and it's like, they're like the better, It's that's like the final chapter in 1975. It's like, you know, the every, every good story, I mean, every story comes to a good end and that's right where it begins and that's the beauty and the legacy. And so to be a part of that um, means so much to me. Um, Carlos, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, you know, um, you stuck by my side through a lot, you know, from the birth of my son and to the day that we lost our mother, you know what I'm saying? From the times when you changed my diaper, you know, and it's not a thing like, in the world I wouldn't do for you as a as a brother. And you know, all of this is done out of love. You know, everything is love. Love is greater than politics, you know. And you know, that love that we cherish, you know, got me to where I am today. You know, I just was a kid who lost his mother, right? Who wanted to know more about her. And I remember, you know, in my book, Book of Rhymes, I talk about when Carlos told me about the barber shop in Louisville. It was a guy in Louisville who had a picture that mom used to have on her wall when they lived in Greenway. This is what Carlos is telling me. Carlos was like, that picture looked familiar. The guy was like, 
Who your people, man? It's on Broadway, you know, Alex, you know, cuts by Alex off of, off of Broadway in Louisville. Carlos took me there. And he, the guy said, who your mama? He said, Darrell Jones. He said, Darrell Jones, I don't know, I don't know. And then he said, it. he said, uh, the University of Louisville, uh, your father's mustache, Darrell, how could I forget Darrell? I'm the first barber to cut her hair. And literally across the street, he had pictures of our mother. He didn't even know that she passed away. You know what I'm saying? And so like, mm -hmm. that was 1975 in the making, you know? And, and, and to have come this far, that was in 2019. It's 2021. We said we was gonna release the book on March 12th. We was gonna release it on 2020 but the coronavirus and then every, the book was done. And then I was like, you know, you know, let's, let's chill, let's see how the climate is. You know what I mean? And then we released next year. So we took our time and the girls came in and they became a part, you know what I'm saying? And, and we, all the stuff that happened in the world, Breonna Taylor, we like, oh my God, like that's so close to home. We got to dedicate this to Brianna Teller, you know? And so just being a part of this whole project is love, you know? And this is something that the city of Winston-Salem will appreciate, you know, because we've met with very important people in the city whose legacy needs to be remembered. You know, um, Louisville, it goes back, our family roots, it goes all the way back to the 1800s and even further. Me and Carlos mm -hmm. talk on the phone every day about this stuff. And so um, to be here right now, you know, to bring in the 12th, which is also your father's birthday as well. Hey, you know, little bro got you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if anybody else would like to come in and speak, you know, 12 o'clock. I got you. I got something special for you, Los. And the people that's on here, we're going to jam out. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have a good time, you know? So love y'all. I love everybody on this call. So, nephew. Hey, what's going on, Auntie Ambo? And I'm, and I'm going to go ahead and say what I have to say. <laughs> go ahead. Day tomorrow, but I just wanted to let you know um that i'm extremely proud of you and i know that um my my sister your mother um is extremely proud of you um she was your champion and your cheerleader uh, when they tried to write you off when they tried to you know tell her that you were something other than great she fought for you and um I am just really proud that you took it upon yourself to put your story um, to paper and to his girls. You don't hear this enough about your dad, um, but he is an amazing man, uh, an amazing father. Um, he is love. I mean, he has a generous heart. Um, he values family. Um, he's extremely respectful. And um, it's all good things coming to you, Carlos, that you can't um, be as good as you are and love the Lord as much as you love him and the respect that you've shown um, your mother in the, in the way that you live your life um, as a man, um, as a nephew, how you honored your grandmother, you know, and the word of God says, that you know honor your mother and father that your life will be long on this earth and and you have done that and so what i see i think um jaylen asked you know what do you see for 1975 what i see is a new york times bestseller um i see uh, many more books in you and you know you've done something that your auntie hadn't done yet i'm working on my book as well so um, you're my inspiration to continue to put my story 
um, on paper as well. So again, I'm extremely proud of you. Keep your head up, uh, keep moving forward, keep speaking greatness over your life. And I know it's hard because, you know, no one can understand not having your mother or your father, you know, and it's, 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 it's hard when you lose your mom, yes. Um, it's really hard when you lose both of your parents. So even though your parents are no longer here, you still got your girls that love you much. You got a grandmother that loves you, no matter um, how she does things. Mm. And most of all, you have an aunt that loves you. And um, again, keep being kind, keep being gentle, keep being the person who is always concerned about other people and, and continue to keep God in your life. Um, continue to acknowledge him in all his in all your ways and he will continue to direct your path. So again, I'm super proud of you. Um, and I'm I'm glad to be able to say, you know, that you are a published author and I look forward to reading the book. Um, to the girls, you know, thank you for honoring your dad and being a part of this. And like I just said to him, you know, you honor your mother and your father that your life will be long on this earth. And that now that you, you girls are old enough to decide what kind of relationship you want to have with your dad, you know, continue to make him a priority in your life because he most certainly has always made each of you a priority in his life. And so that's all I have to say, guys. Love you, nephew. Love you too. Carlos Jones, a novel that highlights the tale of two cities anticipated to be released on March 12, 2021. Pre-orders for merch and the novel will be available beginning February 27th on nowhere6llc.com. That's nowhere6llc.com. Yeah, 1975, really just a project, you know, me and my brother having a conversation about the past, you know, about 1975, like, it's so real. I feel like I'm, I was born in 1975 and I'm a 95 baby, you know what I'm saying? So like, even if you're born in the 90s or you're born in the early 2000s, you don't feel like you was a part of 1975. That's how vivid the pictures are. And when I say the pictures, I'm talking about the words that's in the book. Yeah, 1970. Yeah, Carlos. Mm -hmm. How old you about to be? 56? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I ain't even that close yet. <laughs> How you feel, man, man? You know. I feel I feel good, man. You know what I'm saying? Nobody uh I have a lot of friends. It didn't make it to 46. A lot of friends. Uh, but yeah, I'm 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 ecstatic, man. You know, can't wait to see what this year brings. You know, March 12th, night uh, 2021, and on in to further further years. That's what's up, Carlos. Well, look. <laughs> You know, I got a, a special present, you know, birthday present for you that I want to share um, with you live in front of the world, in front of our family. You know, um, I want to welcome you into authorhood, my brother. You know, uh, it's a great feeling to be an author. And it just turned 12 a.m. So happy birthday, my brother. Happy birthday. We're about to, you know, check us out. No more suits. You know, it's a vibe, y'all. We vibing out. Like it's 1975 tonight. Oh, man. <laughs> 1975. Thank you, Alos. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Mm. 
Put that right there. <laughs> Welcome to Augerhood, my brother. Happy birthday. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um. Y'all feel free to speak, talk. Happy birthday, Father. Who said that? <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's, I, I wanna hear, I wanna hear 